Slipping some good news today, Renance. Oh, yeah. Mmm. Mmm. Tastes like a win. You know, it tastes like victory. Oh, definitely. You know why it tastes like victory? Because it's Raider football night in Richmond County. This is Live at Five. Good evening and welcome back to Live at Five. I'm Lance Jenkins. And I'm Kelsey Rushing. We've had a full week here in Richmond County and tonight is no different. And of course, it's game night for our very own Richmond Raiders. Weather's cooling down, so it's official. Football season is here and I am personally very excited. Sitting under the lights, there's nothing better. So why not start tonight's episode with our local sports? The Raider boys soccer team was on the road hoping to defeat Jack Britt High School last night. The Raiders dropped its third match in four games in heartbreaking fashion, 2-1. to one. Regardless, head coach Benny Howard was pleased with the effort the team showed with their execution. Howard said he has seen improvement with previous areas of difficulty, which makes him very pleased. With 17 minutes left in the game, Richmond made the first goal by senior midfielder Patrick Hamilton with assistance from senior forward Victor Lucero. The Raiders were only able to celebrate for a short three minutes until the Buccaneers found themselves scoring on a free kick after a Richmond foul. Jack Brent brought the tie when the Raiders failed to clear a ball, resulting in an own goal of 40 seconds remaining in regulation. Regardless of the tough loss, the Raiders played very well, and according to Chris Larson, JV head coach, the boys can learn and grow from last night's loss. Once again, we have the Lady Raiders volleyball team back in tonight's news with digs, kills, and aces all to rack up another win, this time against Lumberton 3-0. Richmond's Digger showed up in full force, gathering 47 collectively. Savannah Lampley finished the night with a team-high 13 digs and was supported by Mackenzie Webb, Brianna Basic, and Altman Griffin, among others. Webb also handed out 28 assists, while Basic added two blocks. Collecting 29 kills as a team, Griffin paved the way with 15, followed by Basic, Owen Bowers, Lampley, and Webb. Serving was a key element of Thursday's victory, as seniors Griffin and Webb each had four aces, and senior Bowers also had three. The Lady Raiders started the game with solid ball movement and finishing plays to get the job done against Lumberton's Lady Pirates. Although head coach Shelly Wimpy states the girls were sluggish after a big playing week, getting back to fundamental plays ultimately led to the win. Last night's sets were generally back and forth, but the girls stepped up regardless of being tired physically, she said. Coming together as a team proved successful, and Wimpy aims to beat the school's season record of 16 total wins in a row. She has begun this season with 11 consecutive victories. In additional volleyball news, the JV girls racked up their seventh straight victory against Union Pines. Head coach Ashley Larson said the first game was a slow start, but managed to jump out to a big lead. Larson was pleased that some of the bench players were able to gain experience within the sets between Lumberton. In the first game, freshman middle hitter Georgia Grace Anderson set up the point which accumulated in sophomore middle hitter Jasmine Ewing's volley over to net. In the second game, the Lady Raiders held their opponent at bay and played much more consistently in this game. Freshman Kirsten Bruce hit the ball at the net for the match winner. Richmond will look to continue its historic start to the season as play will pick up next Tuesday, September 12th, as they'll host the newly added SAC team 71st High School. Junior varsity will serve things up at 5 p.m. followed by the varsity team at 6 p.m. For the third consecutive week to start the 2017 season, the Richmond Senior High School JV football team walked away with a win Thursday night on the road at non-conference opponent David W. Butler High School. In a low-scoring affair, the Raiders hung on to win 6-0, shutting out the Bulldogs, all the while scoring a season-low six points. JV head coach Patrick Hope noted his players had to battle a lot of, quote, external forces in order to get the win. He told the team to focus on the things they can control and always focus on the next play. The lone scoring play came early in the game on Richmond's first possession. Sophomore quarterback Noah Altman connected with sophomore wide receiver DJ Stevens on a 25-yard strike. The Raiders' defense had to step up big in order to maintain the shallow six-point lead. Hope said his defense played well and forced a lot of negative plays while also, quote, applying a lot of pressure on Butler's quarterback. Hope said he is proud of the team's accomplishments so far in the season. The JV team is now 3-0 on the young season. NASCAR announced Wednesday that Denny Hamlin's wins in both the Monster Energy Cup Series and Xfinity Series at Darlington Raceway have been encumbered. Hamlin's team was issued an L1 penalty for a rear suspension violation. 
Crew Chief Mike Wheeler will also be suspended for the next two races and was also fined $50,000. The number 11 team will also lose their season points and the playoff points they gained at Darlington. Similar penalties were handed out to Kyle Busch and Joey Logano in the Xfinity Series for a rear suspension violation. Dell Earnhardt Jr. was issued a safety penalty for loose lug nuts at the end of the Southern 500 race. His crew chief, Greg Eyes, was fined $20,000 and suspended for one race. Yeah, I am personally excited about the Raider football game tonight. Not only is it football season, but I'll tell you, Richmond Raiders football, they know how to do football. Right. I mean, Definitely. it's always a fun environment. I mean, I went to, I actually had my first Richmond Raider football game a few weeks back. I will tell you something, I was like, wow, this, I have been to small colleges that don't have this big of an atmosphere. Right. I even went to the school, so I didn't get a chance to get to the games myself because I didn't have a job, didn't have the money. But I always heard good stories about it. Yeah, I mean, tremendous, tremendous uh, atmosphere. And, of course, Raider football in action tonight against Butler High School at home at Raider Stadium. Kickoff 7.30 p.m. If it's not quite 7.30 and you're watching this, go out for a great game. Folks, we'll be right back for a word from our sponsors. You guys just... Outdo yourselves every day. And I really appreciate it. I honest to God don't know what I would do if it worked for you. The things that you do, I'm in approval of. And thank you. I, 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 I don't know what else to say other than thank you. specialty retail store in downtown Rockingham in the heart of Richmond County. We are all about rustic farm style home decor and gifts. We offer a variety of antique, vintage, and new items. We love helping you make your house a home with unique one-of-a-kind finds. We also have specialty gifts for all occasions. I'm Kelly. I worked at Champion Ford for two years. Six years. Three years. One year. I've been at Champion Ford for 13 years. One whole year. 15 years. I'm Jamie. I've been at Champion Ford for 12 years. I've been here eight years. Champion prices, champion service, champion experience. It treat you like a champion today at Champion Ford. Just down the road from my prices, championfordlincoln.com. We are Champion Ford. Family Pharmacy has been serving Richmond County since April 2007, and we have enjoyed getting to know our customers since then. We take our jobs very seriously, and we'll do whatever we can to make sure you have what you need. Come visit us on Fayetteville Road in Rockingham, and we will treat you like family.
Welcome back to Live at 5. And now for tonight's local news. The Sand Hills Ag Innovation Center held their ribbon cutting ceremony yesterday to celebrate a place to better serve the community with fresh food. A project four years in the making, residents from all over the state made their way to Ellerby, the unofficial farming capital of Richmond County, to take part in the celebration. Susan Kelly, who serves as the Richmond County Extension Director, served as Mistress of Ceremony and was very appreciative of all those in attendance. The Ag Innovation Center has been designed to connect Sand Hills region farmers to new markets and resources. The center will include a wide range of equipment, facilities, and services to expand markets and opportunities for farmers in the Sand Hills region. Richmond County Board of Commissioners Chairman Kenneth Robinette said this center is a way to give existing and new farmers a hand up. The Richmond County Board of County Commissioners donated $150,000 to the creation of the facility. The Golden Leaf Foundation also helped the project, donating $475,000. Dan Gerlach, Golden Leaf Foundation President, stated that adding value is what this Ag Innovation Center is all about. It's all about making sure the farmer gets his or her fair share of that dollar. Senator Tom McKinnis, an Ellery native, spoke of the collaborative effort of the community by thanking the DeWitt family for their land contribution and for being a pillar in Richmond County's agricultural successes. This entire project was given much support from the community, and that was evident at the ceremony. With the help of the Ag Innovation Center, a new farmer, Tim Walton, hopes that he can get his small organic farm of crops up and running by October 1st. Today's three-day weather forecast is brought to you by Family Pharmacy. Tomorrow we are looking at a high 80 degrees with no chance to rain, so go out and enjoy the weather. Sunday will cool down a bit to 75 degrees, and Monday will cool to 68 degrees, and we'll see plenty of rain throughout the day. At this point, Hurricane Irma looks as if it will go further inland than previously expected. It is still 600 miles wide, therefore plenty of areas can still be affected. As Irma continues on its path of destruction, Georgia and the Carolinas could still be in its path. Once Irma hits Florida, it will weaken, but there is still a 60 to 80 percent chance of seeing a tornado within a 50 mile radius of the eye of the storm. By Monday evening, we could experience wind up to 86 miles per hour, then lessening by Tuesday. Richmond County could experience still up to three inches of rain at that point, but things can always change, so make sure you are nonetheless prepared. And don't forget about the Dancing with the Stars and the Taste of the Sand Hills event tomorrow night at the Cole Auditorium at Richmond Community College. Tickets are now sold out officially, so if you have your ticket, come out for a great, great cause. And if you don't and would like to contribute, you can make a donation to the Benevolent and Bereavement Program at Richmond County Hospice through the Dancing with the Stars event. For more information, contact Richmond County Hospice. And of course, that's another wrap for another week and another Friday edition of Live at Five. And of course, folks, Hurricane Irma going to be making landfall over the weekend in Florida as a Category 4 hurricane. Uh, it will. It appears to be taking more of a westward path now. Yes, definitely. Uh, so hopefully it won't have too much of an impact here. Uh, but certainly need to still be precautious. There is still a lot of uncertainty in regards to Hurricane Irma's path. I want to warn everybody and to just take precaution and prepare and get the supplies you need. And of course, Kelsey, a lot of folks have been talking about how there's, there's a demand for bottled water and water, right. but you, you know of a place we can get Yes, some. Lidl's, the new grocery store that is directly in front of Walmart and Zaxby's, they have plenty of water right now currently, and it's actually fairly cheap, so if you need water, they have plenty for you. So folks, Lidl in town, stocking up with water. Uh, you want to prepare for what could occur from Hurricane Irma. Still a lot of uncertainty there as to what kind of damage it may cause in this area. Uh, and want to just warn everybody to be precautious and take the precautions necessary. Folks, we appreciate you joining us for another day of Live at Five. We'll be back this Monday for another edition of Live at Five to start your week. I'm Lance Jenkins. And I'm Kelsey Rushing. So long. Thank you.